Yeah. We're gonna watch a video from Red Tree Crime called Drama Queen Promises She's an Innocent Victim. If you guys don't know, I have a criminology degree. We watch true crime. Uh, it's fun. I say things. Let's do it. On April 7th, 2013, a call was made to 911. Hi, ma'am. Um, this is Scott Sunford. I was robbed last weekend. Anyways, uh, after the robbery, I had an ADT alarm system installed, and they put it on a one-week trial anyway. period where if anything went off, nobody would respond. And okay. uh, today at 324, 327, and 328, I had three sensors tripped. And I've been out of town with family for a funeral. My wife was home. And I have okay, did somebody break into the residence? I don't know. I've been out of town. I'm just on my way back. And I haven't been able to get a hold of the wife. So I was just hoping somebody can come meet me out there. It's probably nothing, but I would feel better. When the police arrived on scene, they found Scott Sunford standing behind his car, aiming a handgun at his home. The police found this strange, not only because the home appeared dark and quiet, but also because Scott was a veteran of the military. If Scott was armed and he suspected his wife might be in danger, why didn't he go inside and check on her? The police entered the home and everything seemed normal until they entered Scott's bedroom. On the floor, they found the body of Scott's wife, Desiree, with nine gunshot wounds. A jewelry box and laptop were missing from the home, so it appeared that it may have been a burglary gone wrong. The problem with this idea is that usually when a person finds a thief in their home, that thief will run away. The Very crime true. scene showed police that Desiree had been shot three times, which put her on the ground, and after she was down, the shooter shot six more times. Realizing they had more questions than answers, the police asked Scott to come in and give his official statement. Do you understand each of these rights if I, as I explain them to you? Yes. Okay. There's one thing that does confuse me, though. Yes. Generally, if you read somebody their Miranda rights, that implies that they're under arrest. Uh, no, not always. It just means uh, that yeah, it we're is conducting our investigation. Pretty always, bud. I can tell you, you're, you're not under arrest right now. That's such okay. bullshit. Um, but we are here at the sheriff's office, and so and we're being recorded. It's not really... So, as a matter of protocol... When we're Most people our, our investigations. We do read people that are my yes, warning. yes and no. Oh, okay, that makes sense because at least this way you have it on record that I'm receiving my Miranda rights in case there is an arrest later on. You can't say I wasn't read my rights and get released. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So you understand what's yeah. going on and having those rights in mind. Are you willing to keep talking to me now about what happened out at your house? I talk to you. Of okay. As much as I can. I mean, I can't help you too much. I wasn't there, but. Okay. Um, well, I wasn't either, and I just got here literally fact, a few minutes ago. So, can you just kind of start from the beginning and tell me tell me what happened? Well, quite honestly, what you just your understanding of something else. There was a shooting. Right. Okay. What can you tell me? <laughs> what the hell's going on? All I know is that we were called out to your house, and that. Uh, there was a body all right. found. All right, cops, spill the beans. Um, and uh, it looks like the person had been shot. So crazy. That's where I'm asking you to jump in and help me fill in the blanks as far as what led us out there. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Scott never entered the home, and all he knows is that the body of a woman was found inside. It hasn't been confirmed that it was his wife. The detective only confirms that the victim was shot. What they found strange, besides the lack of emotions when he finds out his wife has possibly been killed, he also doesn't ask any questions about the shooting itself. Is it my wife? Did they find the shooter? How did it happen? These are questions that a person in his position would usually ask. There. Right. Um, let's see. You said today is now the, what, 8th? It's the 8th now, yes. Okay. Just after midnight. On the 6th at uh, 10 in the morning was my Aunt Joy's funeral service in Pasco at their Kennewick at the city church. So uh, Stop it, my car. that morning, I guess that'd be Saturday, I, uh, I left the house at probably 8, 8.30. Okay. And that was the last time I was there before your, well, the last time I was in my house. 
And uh, that's going to be a little later than expected because the idea was I run up, go to the funeral, hugs, handshakes, turn around, go home. And, uh, you know, I had got some family from the coast from all around that I hadn't seen in quite some time. And mm-hmm. a lot of that side of the family is kind of yuppies that I don't get along too well with. You know, I'm blue collar, military mechanic. Don't really hang out with the sharp dressed crowd too much. Yeah. And, uh, but during that drive on 82, I tried repeatedly. In fact, let's see if I can give you some times. Uh, my dad and my grandpa and I had been joking around about how, ah, oh, it's strange. Des hasn't called yet. You know, she hasn't, uh, hasn't been bugging me yet today because she's a real stickler on the times. She schedules tight. Yeah. I adapt and overcome and kind of go spontaneous. So we'd been, uh, joking about that. And, uh, let's see, uh, all it's showing is the last phone call to her at 9-11 p.m., but, uh... That's the last time you tried to call her? Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm sure the phone records could give you more specifics if you need them, but, uh, all along the drive, I just kept calling her randomly trying to get a hold of her and I sent her a text even at one point you know why aren't you answering and uh just wasn't getting anything from her and it was kind of freaking me out because well after the robbery last weekend Deputy Wuchek had said that it looked like they had been interrupted or spooked or something and they may be back so the next day we had a ADT system installed and uh it was all kind of starting to build up and driving me a little nuts. Mm -hmm. And before I even made that turn off to the Yakima highway, you know, maybe 45 minutes, half hour outside of the tri cities, it was kicking in. And I kept thinking, you know, maybe I should just call somebody and have them go check on her. Uh, Maybe I should call the police. Oh no, that's silly. She's probably in the shower. She's probably going to the bathroom doing something or she's outside because she'd said something about wanting to do some yard work. So I had to, fix the tire on the wheelbarrow for her. so wasn't he, wasn't probably he, left the phone inside or she's taking a nap it's on silent was you he know, calling her at like 3 a.m telling myself everything's fine and uh what were they talking about p.m i couldn't take it anymore if i call and she doesn't get it usually within 10 15 minutes she's picked up the phone and called me back you know what's going on so uh by this time it had already been like an hour of me trying to get a hold of her with nothing and I took her car to the tri yeah, I guess and left mine because, well, the last weekend when we were out of town was when it became illegal to be running studs, and I still got my studs on the charger. Mm-hmm. So it was like, ah, don't need a ticket. And Crown Vic's full of gas. Military guy with a Dodge Charger? I can't believe that. Charger's on E and has studs. Come on. And so she convinced me to take the cop car. Law enforcement <laughs> have never had so a Dodge I, Charger I in their life. And she said she didn't want to drive my car. I'm not even going to drive it. Don't even bother leaving me keys, whatever. Well, keys anyways. If you need it, take it. And uh, so I wasn't expecting her to be gone. Really didn't think she'd go anywhere. And with the way the wind was, I knew she wasn't going to take the bike anywhere. She's kind of a picky rider. And uh, so it was driving me nuts. And about the time I got on the Conilac Road-ish area, it, it was too much. I called. And the first gal I talked to, I told her, you know, I'm, I'm probably just crazy. But I checked my phone a little while ago, and I got uh, the, the alarm system was set to arm stay, meaning that she's at home. So... I used to have this alarm system. That kind of implies that she was there, mm-hmm. and the motion detector is turned off for the stay home, and the motion detector comes on for stay gone. Well, when it's home, the door switches still work. And when I checked the phone, and I saw that both doors had tripped within close time frame of each other. Um, when I looked at it, it said front door open, close, right, man, like 324. Relax. And then back door, open, close, 327, open, close, 328. So in my head, I put that together as 
she goes in the front door, out the back door, and then, you know, obviously shuts the doors behind her, and then comes back in the back door and shuts it. So she should be home. So why isn't she answering me? She should be in the house. Because that, that's in, out, in, you know? Scott claims that while he was driving home, he was unable to make contact with his wife. This worried him so much that he called 911 to ask for a wellness check. What's interesting is that after he makes the call, Scott decides that instead of continuing to drive home to see if his wife is okay, he drives around in circles waiting for the police to get there first. That's weird. I kind of stalled a little bit. I drove around waiting, just giving her that chance to call me and uh, giving the deputy a chance to get free and get over there. And uh, I headed to the house and I pulled down the driveway and I went down the driveway to the left and I fired up my spotlight and I pointed it at the back door. I noticed my charger's there, so she must be home. I stayed there. I kept waiting. I kept waiting. I couldn't go in. I didn't know what the hell to do. So I backed the car up a ways and uh, got on the phone. And I, I called my friend Brian that lives out in Glebe. I can't walk in and see anything. If something's wrong in there, I can't see it. But at the same time, somebody broke in when she was there and uh, she got hurt or restrained. And I was sitting out in the car, sitting outside while she's scared. Been more than that, bud. And uh, I can't go in there to help her. That was gonna drive me nuts. So just as I was regaining myself, getting it back together, getting ready to do it, uh, the deputy from Moxie pulled up alongside me. Oh, how convenient. And. I, I was this close to going in. Because right then I was able to just say, hey, my alarm system's on. It's it's off. <laughs> Here's my keys. Please. I can't do this. And uh, yeah, I just waited there. And he walked around. And I, I, uh, honestly, it's fair. I stayed at my car. Had the spotlight on the back door still. Had the door open. Standing in the door, you know, using it for cover. Casey spooks him out the rear and uh, had my weapon ready, but not drawn and uh, just stayed there waiting. And he he circled the residence and he, he went up from around the back side and all along the picture windows and across the back by the master bedroom and bath mm -hmm. around the fr uh, This guy looks like he'd like the taste of decaf coffee. Yeah, that'd be weird. Uh, fence what a onto the patio and in the front door and uh he came i it had been a little while it seems like i should have seen lights coming on i should have seen flashlights in the windows something and i got nothing and uh i didn't hear anything either so i walked around and i, I wanted to see if the bikes were there too because the decaf tastes different than normal uh, a little bit there's like a kind of bitterness to it, but regular coffee also has that. So I don't know if you know, you know, I, I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe she was bound and determined. She had to run down to the store for something. She has her own bike that she rides. Yeah, I got her one of the uh, newer bike than mine. <laughs> I got her a 2010 uh, Sportster 883 iron and uh, welded up a little cargo rack for the back of it and everything so she could. What year is this? School. 2013, and, I guess, uh, from the date? So I went into the garage real quick, and I checked to make sure the bikes were there. Yeah, both bikes are there. My car's there. Her car's here. I look over, and there's the deputy standing out on the front patio, looking like he's on the phone or on the radio or something. He had a device up to his head. And uh, he saw me, and immediately... Why well, mention the whole bike details? Now, I'm not saying he is... The murderer, especially because of the title, but even a suspect is does this sort of thing where they'll like they'll just talk and talk and talk and say everything that could sound like that's what happened and anything that seems believable and whatever like works. They'll just mention stuff that's irrelevant just to like sprinkle in more lies, stuff like that. He started walking over 
and I didn't make it any more than about halfway to the gravel to him when he said, you know, go wait over by the car. Uh, I'm coming with you. Let's go over there. Uh, I opened it. Uh, he said, I opened the door and I, I called for Des and I got no response. I, I hollered police department, nothing. I didn't see a dog. Nothing's going on in there. It just doesn't seem right. I got back up coming. Next thing I know, they come outside and one guy's patting me down. They're asking if I'm armed. I'm like, yeah, I just told the other deputy, I got a 45 right side inside the waistband, hip holster, you know? And, uh, I had it in the car cause well, that's my dad's old gun. You know, I was bringing it up from the tri cities and, and when I was pulling into the house, I stopped up at the end of the driveway, right up there by the dumpster, about halfway to the house. And uh, went around, popped the trunk, and quickly slapped it on before I came down. So I was ready to go. And uh, so they, they took the gun and patted me down, and they pulled a surefire flashlight out of my back pocket. I haven't seen that yet. And took whatever else they wanted and uh, had me sit in the back of one of the cars. And... Uh, one of the deputies told me that there was a deceased woman inside and that was all he would say about it. He obviously, I mean, I understand he can't ID her, so they don't know her. That's probably her. Okay. So I guess as of now, I still can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure. Don't act so melancholy about your wife dying, bro. The detective finally confirms that it was in fact his wife's body, and all Scott can say is okay. Scott doesn't ask any further information about what happened to his wife. Military Instead, man the conversation moment. turns to the gun he was holding. <laughs> you said that you had your dad's forty-five with you. Yeah, my dad was a sergeant with the Franklin County Sheriff's Department for many years. And uh, he had a old 80 series. Colt Mark IV, 1911, that uh, was his duty pistol for many years. And he uh, shot competitively for the police department. <laughs> got all kinds of great awards. Having emotions is so unmanly, so I just became a rock. <laughs> uh, no need for sad. Only muscle and gun. Wife dead, but still rock. <sighs> And, and unwoke beer and red hat. <laughs> everything. And uh, after the deployment, uh, everything was like, eh, heirloom. Yeah, that's it's nice now. Yeah. No so, safety uh, on gun. Did you keep any other guns inside the house? Yeah, I had a few. Okay, what kind of guns did you have in there? Um, let's see, I had, uh, well, let's go with Dez's. Um, when her grandfather died, her mom uh, left a few guns to us because I'm a military guy, I shoot. I got Des going on it, so she left uh, a Remington Wingmaster. A shotgun? Yep, and a Remington Huntsmaster, which is a pump action 30 out 6. And then uh, two revolvers made by Haas. Um, they were Sig Sawyer before Sig Sawyer got together. <laughs> we're cool. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> what caliber are the revolvers? <laughs> one of them is a twenty-two long rifle, and one of them is a three fifty-seven. I was They're waiting for my moment, actions. bro. Yeah. Um, Des also had a carry pistol. It was a uh, Ruger LCP three eighty. None of the guns found in the home match the bullet casings found near Desiree's body. Interesting. As the interrogation plays out, Scott tells the detective the real reason he wasn't home when his wife had been killed. Scott claims that he and his wife had an open relationship, and he had been visiting his girlfriend, Paige Blades. Scott explains that not only is he in a relationship with Paige, but so is his wife. You know, I... What is happening? I shouldn't go there because it's kind of rude, but, uh... Well, Des didn't want me to say anything to anybody, but she kind of had uh, mixed feelings. 
and if I'll do anything, but that's one thing I can't provide for. So at one point, her and Paige had a, a little thing going for a while there, a little experiment. Okay, so it was so, <laughs> it was Desiree and Paige who had the sexual relationship, yeah, and but not you and Paige, or we all did. Sometimes you and Paige too. Honestly, we all did. Okay. Just a little experiment. So you don't think it, it would probably would not have bothered Desiree to know that you were going to stay with Paige? No. And honestly, we didn't even do anything. I was out on the couch anyways, because it's kind of one of those things where <laughs> as long as we're going to Bro had a do anything, we need to make sure we all are fine with doing anything. They were concocting a theorem, guys. That's crazy. Yeah. Me, when I'm an emotionally unavailable military guy and won't admit how I feel about relationships, so I call it an experiment. Just a little thing. It's definitely not something I'm, like, way for and like a lot. Definitely not. It's just like a, a, a little experiment we do. So, so everybody <laughs> stays informed. All right. So if there's no information or no previous arrangements made, nothing happens. Avoid hard feelings. So it sounds like you and Desiree had a pretty open relationship as long as the community Generally, no. Were, no. Generally, no. Just with her. Just with her. There was a special relationship with Paige. Yeah. Okay. How, how uh, had you and Desiree been getting along lately? Great. No problems in the marriage? No. Typical marriage things, you know. Bickering and picking at each other for stupid little things. Yeah, no big fights though. No. Don't worry. Kiss and hug and go to night happy, or go to bed at night happy. You know. Okay. The detective plans on speaking with Paige to hopefully get more information, but before he lets Scott go, he wants to know why he didn't go in the home to check on his wife. Well, I'm just thinking, you're a, you're a big guy. You're a sick. I don't know, maybe because they drove there to kill her and they're pretending she didn't go with him. Six four. That would be crazy. Somewhere up there. Six four, two fifty. You've you've got a firearm on you. You've been in combat. I mean, you've done some serious shit that most people will never do. Um, so if anyone's gonna be willing to go charging in the house and make sure their wife's okay, it would seem to me that it would be you. Well, it's not that I was afraid of anybody being in there. You know, I, I'll take on a hundred people for her. That's fine. Yeah. Clearly that not. That wasn't the concern. It was her. What do you mean? You just don't want to see what may have happened to her. Yeah. That's fair. And what did you think you might see if you went inside? Roll around a thousand of the worst things you could think of. The only reason I would have been forced to go in there, the only reason I could talk myself into it, was the fear that she still needed me in there. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if she's, if she was in there and she was hurt and uh, scared or restrained, and I was sitting outside, just idly waiting while she's in there going through that alone, that would have killed me. But that would have, you would have. Okay. So if that would have played out had if somebody else goes in there and it's fine, everything's empty. That's great. Did uh, Desiree have problems right. with anyone? Else? But like, that's quite literally why he would have gone inside. Exactly. He's sitting there like, if she was like going through it, I would have, but I didn't. And I'm like, weird. Yeah, why is your first assumption she's dead? I feel like I feel like his logic is all the reasons he would have gone inside, yet he didn't. Else, was there anyone else know. that she has fought with recently, or that you can think of that might want to hurt her? Nothing. I mean, who hates an art teacher? It's an elective. Everybody that's in there wants to be there. So she hasn't had problems with anyone? No. Neither one of us. Other than her, um, 
relationship with Paige was did she have any other sexual relationships that you know of? No, a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago, before we were even married, she cheated on me at one point with another guy, but uh, you know, that's long since over with. When you were dating, she yeah. had an affair? She, has she had any affairs since you've been married? No, not that I know of. She hasn't been good. <laughs> okay. Even though the detective except found it strange that doing... Scott never went into the home to check on his wife. Yeah, except the person were like, whatever. <laughs> it wasn't enough to charge him with anything. On. The police decided to interview Paige next, but her story was almost exactly the same Facebook as Scott's. Photos? The detective reported that it was almost as if she was coached to say what she said. Because Paige provided no new information, the case went cold for over a year. During this time, the police found out that Paige was pregnant. So Scott and Paige became their prime suspects. In the summer of 2014, the police received an anonymous tip, claiming they knew who the shooter was. The caller turned out to be Paige, and she claimed that her best friend, Marty Grismer, was the killer. Okay, so the obviously the big reason that I wanted to talk to you face to face was that um, we totally. got a Crime Stoppers tip um, from you with some new information about the shooting. Yep. Um, did a little this research best friend in the room with us right now? that you sent us and um, found a picture of Marty Grismer. Is that the gentleman that we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Would you mind just initialing and putting the date below that? Normally I would do a montage, but you were so specific with your description about who it was that I felt pretty comfortable. He looks a little bit different now. Okay. How, how does he look different now? Um, he he has hair. He has hair. Oh. Whoa! Are they cry fake crying though? That's Dude, look at the title okay. of the video. I'm gonna assume, yeah. It is quite a different. I mean, unless a third woman enters the arena, well, I'm gonna assume this is her. Eighteen in that picture, and he's ten years later. Okay. So, during in the tip. Um, you were pretty specific about um, some new information that's come to light. So why don't you just tell me in your own words what you've heard. Men how can you heard be it. queens. <laughs> and I think that's a, as good a place as any. God, this um, microphone is so week, catching it all, every single Scott scrape. Over. He was there for the week. And, um, Stop moving! We were arguing. It's and getting Marty, every scrape and creak and everything, bro. Um, is was my babysitter at one point, oh, and yeah. we had been up all night uh, arguing and talking. And I asked Marty to come over and get the baby. Um, so he came over and he picked him up, and it was everything was fine. Scott was asleep. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's what I do when I cry. I have a little wind up. To go. I told him what was going on. <laughs> and um He asked me at this point is this fake's insanity, brother. No, 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 no. Not even close. Like, we're not talking like acting silly in the interrogation room. We're talking like during the crime. This is an interesting one. I don't know where it's going to go. He asked me if I wanted him to take care of this new woman like he did Des. And I asked him what he was talking about. <sighs> I 
The first time you came to see me, I was pregnant. We had just found out about three weeks before the shooting that I was pregnant. Marty was one of the first people that I told. And apparently he decided that if the baby was Scott's like it was supposed to be, then Desiree would cause issues. Oh my God. So did you told Marty that Scott was the father of the baby? Oh, Marty knew that Scott and I were together and Scott was the only one that I was seeing. And he's smart enough to put it together. Like he asked me for sure if it was Scott's and I told him yeah, because at the time I thought that was the case. Wait, you're saying that I'm pregnant the with the, the guy shoot, I had sex with? You know, Scott and I went to dinner with a coworker, mm -hmm. and I had asked him to come over. And no way! And always gas whenever he made extra trips. I was a little bit short on money, and I asked Marty if I could borrow $20. So he came over and dropped the money off. We sat and visited for 15 minutes. You know she ago, planned out this interrogation in her head, day. too. That's the best part. It was pretty late at night. But then I had my $60 that I could give to Scott for gas. She's like at... at so he already knew that Scott wasn't going to be home. Minute 10 of the interview, I'm going to fake on cry. Was that he had gone home. That's the kill shot. Gone to sleep for a couple of hours, and he got up. I can't look at that. He had an extra clip of some old ammo that he had bought in a few years ago. He ran out all of the ammo in his backyard until he had a single clip left. He had a gun. It was untraceable, unregistered, and... Um, he said he took it. He made sure that everything was wiped down, completely clean, no fingerprints on anything, none of the bullets, reloaded the clip. <sighs> he turned his phone off before he left the house, and he took 24 out the back way to Scott's house. <sighs> Marty was my best friend for a long time. But now I'm framing him. <laughs> Scott had given him a tour of the house a couple months before. And he knew that I had a key there. And he knew that there was a key outside. Do you know how he knew that? Because he knew our routine. He knew... It was just stuff that we talked about. Our routine? I was excited about getting the house. I was excited about everything was new and, you know. He watched. You know, it was just stuff that we shared. I never told him where the key was hidden. He said it took him probably 15 minutes to find it. He got the key. He went in the front door because he knew that that was the closest to the bedroom. Well, that's not true. And he opened the door. And Ada came out barking. Des came out right behind her and he shot her. He shot her three times. She went down. He shot her some more. I don't. Also not true. I don't remember how many bullets he said. It was a full clip. Imagine self-reporting this hard. 10 or 15 feet away. Like a year after he got the trail to goes cold. He was trying to crawl away. He wanted to make sure that she had an open casket funeral. He went to the back of the house. 
and move the board off the window that Scott had put up after the robbery. The fuck? Hold on, oh, somebody's... That's not awkward at all. Is that him trying to call you? That was Scott trying to call me. His dad's here with me. I only told him that I was setting up a meeting with you. I haven't actually talked to him yet. Uh, so he doesn't know the story about Marty? Is he going to react uh, possibly violently, do you think? That's why I didn't tell him. I waited for him to leave. Yeah, before Scott, I call me like 30 minutes of the interrogation. Paige is claiming that after Marty found out she was pregnant, he decided to take Desiree's life because he believed Scott was the father and he wanted them to be together. It turns out that Scott was not actually the father. Instead, the father was one of Paige's previous ex-boyfriends. What makes Paige's confession interesting is that on her phone, the police found text messages between her and Desiree, where Desiree tells Paige that she was not comfortable with her seeing Scott. They also found messages between Paige and Scott. Wait, what? Oh, Desiree tells her. I thought Paige told Desiree, like, I don't like that you're seeing your husband. But she told him if something ever happened to Desiree, she would take her place. How um, close were he and Marty? I wouldn't say that they were extremely close. I can't believe it. Somebody is self-reporting because they don't think phones, like, keep data. That's crazy, even though it's like the one thing that phones make money doing. Marty was my best friend. Marty and I started dating for a little bit until he found out about Scott, and I told him I couldn't see him anymore. But we were friends. We would go out together and stuff. Uh, they didn't... There's, there's an old lady in Yakima. Scott's the husband. Scott Marty's the random friend she's her. trying to scapegoat. Marty helped me take care of her. And sometimes him and Scott would get together up in Yakima. Murderers when their phone um, keeps the data saying they were going to kill that. somebody. That was how Marty found the house and got the tour of the house was because he was up there to see Lori. But I hit the delete button. <sighs> so he goes to phone hold data. I think that he said that he exited the back door, walked out, walked back in to make it look like he had come through the back door because it was raining that night and he wanted to leave shoe prints. He put the key back in his hiding spot, went back inside again, grabbed a jewelry box off of her dresser, and he left. If you initiated another conversation with him, do you think he would talk to you about it more? I'm sure he would. He worships the ground I walk on. He's obsessed with me. Is that something that you would consider? I'm very humble. That's all I could think about the last two days. What if, what if there was a situation where we could put a wire on you would you be willing to talk to him with the wire on if you walk in the garden yeah even though the detectives hey, believe that scott and Paige were still involved they didn't have any evidence that would guy. lead to their arrest Paige attempted to wear a wire and get marty to confess but marty acted like he didn't know what she was talking about yeah it was like a few weeks to... later Damn, a co-worker from marty's scare. job contacted the police telling them <laughs> that they found a plastic bag filled with gun parts in his office the police were able to match the parts with the bullet casings found at the crime scene oh, how convenient this would lead them to marty's home more specifically his home office inside the office they found a laptop and a jewelry box which had been stolen from desiree's room they also found shoes that were an exact match to the shoe prints found outside Desiree's home. The police found it strange that a year later, suddenly the evidence was found, and it was all out in the open for all to see. Regardless of how they got the evidence, it was more than enough to bring Marty in for questioning. Throughout his interrogation, Marty claimed innocence. He explained that he believed he was being set up by Paige because he had loaned her his gun just days before Desiree had been killed. At one point, Marty says he can't believe this is happening and that it is making him sick to his stomach. Did you kill uh, Desiree? No, you say no. Did, do you know who did kill Desiree? 
I have a good idea that Paige had it done. Okay. Were you present when she was killed? No. Were you involved in or aware of the planning of Desiree's death? Not beforehand, and no. Okay. I mean, after the fact, on I figured, I figured on there that she had done something. Has ever has Paige ever confessed to you that she killed Desiree or had her killed? Huh? She gave me the impression on there that she had it arranged. She didn't say, yes, I had her killed. She didn't say that she'd done that, but she gave me the impression when I asked about that after the fact with the guns and everything else, like I got it back, I'd asked her, did you do something with this? Did you, I mean, why did, why did you ask for my gun? Why did you do this on there? I don't know. I don't know why she wanted to keep me around. Maybe for this exact scenario. Maybe for you guys coming down on her and figuring it out so that she could use me on there and get out of it. That's the only thing that makes any sense in my mind on there. Is that she wants me to be the scapegoat. If you don't then you won't say a word. I don't know who killed her. I don't. I believe Paige had it done. I don't know if she did it. I don't know if she had someone do it. I don't know. That's the impressions I got is that she had it arranged. I don't know what to believe. I don't, honestly, I have no idea what to believe out of her, what's true and what's not, what's a game. The lack of a confession didn't stop the police from charging Marty with murder. Prosecution had more than enough evidence to take the case to trial. What police moment? Bro, the evidence just magically appears a year later and you're like, we got him. Thank God this random lady has shown up and given the evidence to us. No reason. But instead, Marty would enter an Alfred plea, which meant he never confessed but agreed the evidence outweighed him. In exchange for his plea, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Depending on who you ask, the detectives in this case still believe that Scott and Paige were somehow involved. One theory they have is that Desiree didn't want Paige and Scott together, and after Paige realized she was possibly pregnant with Scott's child, she devised a plan with Scott to end Desiree's life. Scott would have provided all the information she would have needed about the alarms in the house, wow. and Paige would have used Marty's obsession with her to get his gun. She would then set him up with the evidence they collected when she realized she and Scott were suspects. This is one of many theories about this case. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case, so please share them in the comments below. No thoughts, please, stupid. That's wild.